Now at 5.30, a large fire destroyed a popular restaurant in Laurel County this morning. We'll have a live report from the scene with the latest on the investigation. Also on WKYT this morning, what was once an eyesore in Clark County is going to be turned into a nature attraction. Colder air is filtering in as we speak. Here comes the snow along the way. It's taking some time, but it'll be here shortly. I'll show you when you can track those latest details. Coming up. Tracking. Alerting. Protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in. It's also Groundhog Day. We're glad you're with us. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Yeah, all eyes on Phil. We'll see what he uh, comes up with. <laughs> That's right. Uh, or whatever, Groundhog. Maybe there's one uh, around your place that you'll be watching this morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris with a more scientific look at the forecast. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, you look down toward the southeast and we still have some rain down there, not even snow. It's going to take some time before we actually get those flakes filling on in. I think we already have some flakes in the region, northern zones, north Western zones. You can see little bits and pieces, Mount Olivet, Robertson County, around that area. But really, the bigger picture here is that colder air filters in. Here comes the moisture along with it, which in terms of snow, and uh, it's going to be flying through very shortly. Don't look at the sky cams, they're actually giving a bad feedback there on the sky cams. But 32 there in Frankfort, 36 in Corbin. So you can see we're starting off in the 30s, but look toward the afternoon. We finish off in the 20s. Dress prepared for the 20s this afternoon. It's going to be cold and breezy. It won't feel great, but at least it'll dry some things out. Now, the next couple of days look pretty good, but then we get another shot at some snow. It's going to be up and down. A roller coaster ride forecast is what I have for you in about 10 minutes. All right, we thank you. Let's get to the news. We have breaking news out of Laurel County that we're following this morning. Crews are still trying to put out a fire that ripped through a building in London. The fire started just before 1 o'clock and it has destroyed a locally famous restaurant right there in the downtown area. WKYT's Mark Barber is live from near where the fire broke out. Mark, good morning. What can you tell us? Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. All of Main Street is closed as firefighters say they are desperately trying to put out the flames that are tearing through the iconic restaurant that has been here since the 1940s. Now, firefighters say, sadly, at this point, the flames and the smoke have completely damaged this restaurant, well known here as Weavers. They also say that it is heavily damaged. The smoke has a nearby clothing store known as Bob's Ready to Wear. Now, firefighters say, fortunately, no one was hurt, but they say that this community is hurting because of the significance that Weavers has to the whole London community. Again, this restaurant here has been here since the 1940s, well known for its chili dogs with its secret recipe. And we spoke with firefighters who say that as they've tried to put out the flames, all they can think about is the history here. <laughs> My time staying up on the aerial, watching everything evolve, it's just, it, to be honest with you, it was just a sinking, a sinking feeling because I know what this business uh, means to the folks of London Laurel County. And, and how long it's been around, it's just kind of heartbreaking. Firefighters believe that this fire started shortly after midnight. Now, at this point, it has been burning for about five and a half hours. They say for the most part, it is contained. They are still trying to put out hot spots so that are continuing to flare up. They still have the ladder trucks up here pouring water down on the roof. They say that at this point, they still don't know what started the fire, but investigators will be coming out here later today, and they will be trying to figure out what sparked the flames. Live in London, Mark Barber. WKYT. A lot of people have fond memories of Weavers. Thank you very much for the report, Mark. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office and the coroner there locally are investigating a death this morning. Someone found a woman dead outside a home on Nest Egg Road near Jeffersonville on Friday night. And we're told that she did not die of natural causes. The sheriff says police plan to pick up the investigation today. That storm is set to deliver another dose of snow to the northeast. It's already buried much of the Midwest under almost a foot of snow. CBS's Brian Webb reports from New York. The Chicago area was buried under more than a foot of snow as a winter storm moved through the area Sunday. The storm grounded more than a thousand flights at both of Chicago's airports, leaving travelers stranded. They can't get us back out until Tuesday, so we're kind of hoping that we can get out sooner rather than later. In parts of Indiana, heavy snow and strong winds made driving dangerous. It was the same scene in Ohio where snow plows worked through the day. The weather system stretches over a massive part of the U.S. from Nebraska to Maine, and forecasters say it's moving unusually slow. 
essentially across southern Michigan, central New York, and into New England, could see a foot or more of total snow. That would bring some places around Massachusetts up to 50 inches of snow in nine days, an entire winter's worth. Yesterday, people in Boston stocked up on essentials. Last Monday's nor'easter pounded Boston with almost 25 inches of snow. In New York City, up to six inches of snow is expected, along with a wintry mix. The biggest threat in this case would be ice. We would expect a lot of icing on our roads and sidewalks, up to a quarter inch of ice in some places. Mayor Bill de Blasio was among those criticized last week for shutting down the city when less than 10 inches of snow fell. Unlike last time, this time the city will stay open for business. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. Well, New York City trains and buses will operate today. Schools are still open. The mayor says he'll make a decision on school closings early in the morning. Classes in Chicago, Detroit, and Boston are canceled for the day. Well, the storm is causing issues right here in Kentucky. Right, several flights have been delayed or canceled out at Bluegrass Airport. And WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live from the airport with the latest on this travel alert. Hey, good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca from a very windy bluegrass airport. And we've been out here for about an hour now, and I can tell you it is getting a lot colder out here. Now, travel wise, the only problems here are a few flight cancellations, but that is expected to change with those temperatures continuing to drop and the possibility of some snow. With wintry weather slamming the Midwest, flights headed from Lexington to Chicago are canceled as well as all arriving flights from Chicago. With colder weather expected to move in, many road crews are now out in the area patrolling and treating the roadways, something they were not able to effectively do overnight due to that rainfall. Transportation officials say by 6 o'clock they expect the pavement temperatures to be close to freezing, possibly causing slick spots during the morning commute especially on bridges and overpasses. Officials encourage anyone who has to be out on the roads this morning to give yourself some extra time to get where you are going and be aware there might be some slick and icy roads. Now, if you are scheduled to fly out of here in Lexington at some point today, airport officials encourage you to check your flight status a few hours before your scheduled takeoff. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All right, Hillary, thank you. And uh, keep in mind, those temperatures will be dropping through the day. An Eastern Kentucky family is saying goodbye to a nine year old boy who was killed in a crash. Last weekend in Perry County, nine year old Randall Wells was in the car with his mother when a driver hit their car head on. Yesterday, family members held his funeral at a place they say he loved the most his elementary school in Leslie County. Randall's mother said she was thankful for the support of the school and the community. It, it's really, really touched me. It's touched me so much. And I appreciate everything that everybody is doing. Fund has been set up to help the family pay for expenses. If you would like to donate to that, you can go to our website, WKYT.com, and find out how. In Oldham County, family members laid a U.S. Marine to rest. Hundreds of people attended the funeral for Captain Adam Satterfield. The 25-year-old was one of two Marines killed in a helicopter crash last Friday during a training exercise in Southern California. Students who used to walk the halls of South Oldham High School with Captain Smith joined the community to pay their respects. We just thought it would be a nice gesture to come out and support a former Dragon and kind of pave the way for our football team and just show support for him and all that he did for our country. Among the hundreds in attendance at the funeral service were servicemen and women from California and other states. Captain Satterfield was buried at the Floydsburg Cemetery with full military honors. Deputies in Laurel County are investigating a string of utility trailer thefts. The latest happening Friday night near London. Deputies say someone stole a black 5X10 utility trailer from a home off Kentucky 363. The victim has surveillance video of a man driving up to the home and trying to hook the trailer to his van. They say he came back 15 minutes later with a proper hitch to take the trailer. The victim posted the pictures to Facebook and deputies were able to recover it, but they have not been able to make any arrests yet. Well, an eyesore in Clark County is turning into a site for sore eyes. Flooding destroyed the Riverview Trailer Park on Athens Boonesboro Road in Clark County, but emergency management bought the land and cleaned it up. In the past, whenever the Kentucky River would flood, water would just flood the park and it would destroy property and make the homes unlivable. So they sat abandoned. That is, until the county bought the land and tore down the 18 abandoned mobile homes. 
it's all clear now. It looks great. So we're hoping to make this a destination for kayakers and canoeists where they'll stop there and do primitive camping as they venture further down the river. While no permanent structures can be built on the land because of the flood risk, Epperson hopes the area can still attract tourists and locals. County leaders planning on the Boy Scouts and Girls, uh, Girl Scouts taking care of the plants in the area. Well, it's 539, and the New England Patriots are the winners of Super Bowl 49. They beat the Seattle Seahawks 28 to 24. They were all tied 14-14 going into the half. And the Patriots are now the sixth team to win at least four Super Bowls. And the big game featured some big entertainment, too. Pop singer Katy Perry performing at the halftime show, joined by Lenny Kravitz and rapper Missy Elliott. The golden anniversary of the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 50, is going to be played in Santa Clara, California next year. Big time. A big tiger was pretty cool, I thought. Well, for one Southern Kentucky eight year old boy, uh, the Super Bowl was just unforgettable. The Make a Wish Foundation granted Shannon Cox a trip to Arizona to see the Seahawks play. Doctors diagnosed Shannon with leukemia in December 2013. Since arriving in Arizona, Shannon and his family have played on the field with retired NFL players and toured the locker rooms. It, it means everything to him. He is just overly excited to be here and to be able to. Do this stuff to, to experience this, I guess. And it's every day. He'll, he counts down the days to today. That's what he's been doing. Well, Shannon's cancer, we are happy to report, is in remission. Of course, he does have to go undergo some preventative treatments, three years of those. Well, we wish him well, and it looks like he had a good time. After a week of brutal weather across much of the Midwest and the Northeast, all eyes now turn to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania this morning to see if winter will last a little longer this year. Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog weather predictor extraordinaire, will climb out of his home on Gobbler's Knob and give his forecast later this morning. If he sees his shadow, well, we're supposed to expect six more weeks of winter. If not, We'll supposedly get some relief with an early spring.